I had the opportunity to go to Sony's condo event with guys like Ben Johnson, Jason Herman, and Mark Camera Crisis Bennett. And while I was there, I was able to shoot with my A6700 with a couple different lens setups and the A7C2 with a couple different lenses. And I wanted to share the shots that I got with you guys in a side-by-side -side comparison and also give you my user experience and what it was like filming with both cameras. They're both almost identical in body size and type and weight. And when I recently made a camera comparison on the A6700 and the a 7 c I was getting the two cameras completely confused unless I looked at the top labels of both cameras. And as you probably know, most of my camera comparisons have a heavy emphasis on specs. And specs are not everything, but they're important. And in this video, I wanted to share my user experience, portability, the weights, the different lenses that I had on the camera, some of the quirky stuff, and just share that with you while I show you side-by-side -side comparisons and some video tests. If you don't already follow me and you want more tips and tricks on how to get better at filmmaking and using these type of cameras, then make sure to join the Film Alliance by subscribing. Today, I would like to know which one of these two cameras you like better and why, so please let me know in the comment section. While I was in Utah, the temperature was about 75 degrees-ish during the day, and I didn't have any overheating issues with either camera. At the event, you could pretty much rent whatever camera or lens setup that you wanted. I had brought the 6700 with the Viltrox 13mm f1.4, and while I was there shooting with this thing, I really started to fall in love with the APS-C setup. It's so much lighter, it's so much more portable than my full frame cameras. And the image quality that you get out of this camera at the price point, it's pretty remarkable. I love the idea of beginners being able to jump into the arena and even pro shooters can kind of downgrade and get a camera like this as a B cam or a C cam and still not compromise on that image. The lenses that I used on some of the video tests for both of these cameras were the Viltrox 13 millimeter F1.4, which right now is going for 458 bucks. I brought my Tamron 28 to 75 millimeter F2.8, which is right now going for 899. Don't ask me why I brought that lens when you could rent any lens that you wanted there. But I did end up shooting with it because I wanted to see the picture quality out of the A7C2. Then I also rented the 12 to 24 millimeter G Master lens, which was an F2.8. I rented that new 16 to 35 f2.8 g master 2 lens for both cameras if you noticed a trend with that graphic the full frame lenses are generally more expensive than aps-c lenses in fact if you think about it if i was to buy the a7c2 in that 12 to 24 g master lens then you're out the door five thousand bucks whereas if you wanted to just get a wide angle prime lens like this setup right here the a6700 and the viltrox 13 f1.4 you're still under two grand now i'm not saying that all full frame lenses are as expensive as those g master lenses but it is a good indication on the differences between APS-C lenses and full frame lenses. A lot of people might want to go out and take the money that they would spend on those full frame lenses and invest it into APS-C lenses and be able to get a wider array of different lenses. Now you can use APS-C lenses with the A7C2 in crop mode, but it does have a 1.5 times crop. And if you're only going to use APS-C lenses with the A7C2, then you might as well save 800 bucks and pick up the A6700 instead, which can also shoot in 4K120. But with that 4K120, does come a 1.5 times crop, but if you shoot in 4K60, there's no crop. Whereas the A7C2 does have a 1.5 times crop when shooting in 60, like we just talked about. And it's for that reason, and also the lack of time that I had, that I threw both cameras into 4K60, and I pretty much got all of my B-roll with that. I'm not much of a photography guy, and I've gotten a lot of photography with the a 74 so I wasn't too concerned about what the images look like out of the A7C2, because it pretty much is the same processor and sensor as the a 74 and the a 6700 is the same processor and sensor as the FX30. Normally in the comparisons that I do, I switch the picture profiles and frame rates and resolutions so that you guys can have a good idea on which camera is better. But in this case, I just shot in 4K60. Oh yeah, and while I was out there shooting, my buddy Jason Herman came over to me and he's like, hey, do you wanna borrow the 200 to 600 lens for some of these shots? And I was like, sure. So I put it on the A6700 and my mind was blown at some of those shots. So I'll also include some of those shots into this video as well. As I mentioned, both cameras have a very very similar size and shape to them. You wouldn't know what camera you're shooting with if you had a blindfold on. Maybe you would, but not me. And I had to look down at the labels while I was switching lenses back and forth to make sure I knew what I was shooting when I was shooting it because I just wanted to get a feel for not only the image that was coming out of it, but also the display. Both displays on these cameras are 1.04 million dots. And while I was out shooting in that bright sunlight, I didn't have any issue with not being able to see it. I mean, there's always gonna be some glare because it's 
a glass display, but for the most part, I had no issues being able to see the display. I did not use the EVF on either camera, but both EVFs are 2.36 million dots. So both pretty much have the same display and same EVF. If you're a vlogger and you need that stabilization, then the A7C2 might be your go-to camera because it's got seven stops of stabilization, whereas the A6700 only has 5.5. But I only noticed a big difference in stabilization when I was shooting the A7C2 in 4K24 without that 1.5 crop. Once I put it into 4K60 and I got that 1.5 crop, it seemed that both cameras were about the same with stabilization. So thankfully, I don't have the steadiest hand in the world. I was able to slow it down in post-production by 40% to make it look kind of like a slow motion shot on both cameras. The A7C2 down samples from 7K and the 6700 down samples from 6K, which to me, I didn't see much of a difference, especially when I came home and I put the footage onto my big screen and I was able to look at the entire picture. I didn't notice any resolution difference. And I hope as you're watching these comparisons, you can see that the colors and the resolution pretty much look identical. If you were to scale in on both of them, then you'd start to see the image break apart a little bit faster on the A6700 than the A7C2. But as I've said in the past, I've never had a client or somebody I was doing a video for ever scale in to see how pixelated the image gets once they get to like 500 times scale. Both cameras have that AI chip, which is great for stabilization, autofocus, and auto reframing and time lapse, things like that. I've never used auto reframing in real world situations, but I believe that it could be used if you're filming yourself and you want to make it look like somebody's filming you. If you want to take advantage of that speedy autofocus out of both of these cameras, then make sure to turn the transition speed to seven and the responsiveness to five. Before that, I was thinking, man, this autofocus seems like it's as fast as my older A7 III, but then Jason Herman told me to turn these settings and now I'm like, okay, now I can understand why autofocus on Sony cameras is so popular. Don't get me wrong, out of the box, both autofocus systems are unbelievable, but if you really want to take it to that next notch, then just turn those settings up. I didn't do a rolling shutter test with either of these cameras because I didn't want to look weird in front of Gerald Undone, but I did test out the rolling shutter with the A7CR and the A6700, and the A6700, because of the APS-C sensor, will do better than those full frame sensors. Although if you turn the A7C2 into crop mode, then it's going to be about the same as the 6700. The A7C2 is 33 megapixel and the A6700 is 26 megapixel, so you're going to get better photos out of the A7C2 unless you throw it into crop mode. Again, if you're going to throw that thing into crop mode, then you might as well save 800 bucks and just pick up the 6700. One test that I want to do is I want to put the A7C2 into crop mode and put prime APS-C lenses on both cameras and then do low light tests to see which one looks better. I didn't have time to do it there, but once I get my hands on the A7C2 again, I'll make sure to do that test. I think the A6700 is the better all around camera with cheaper lens options, higher resolutions, and just a fun camera to shoot with. I think the A6700 hands down is a better value proposition. Although it's been getting a lot of heat, pardon the pun, on overheating, I've never had any issues with it overheating. I did do an overheating test with the 6700 and got about 37 minutes in 4K60, but I'll never shoot that long in 4K60 anyways. Even when I'm out there shooting in 4K60 in bursts, maybe like 15 to 20 second bursts over a period of like three or four hours, it doesn't even warm up. So I don't have any overheating issues with my 6700. The A7C2, if it's anything like the A7CR, will last longer in overheating when you do those long take. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm a full frame guy. This is the A7S III, which is full frame shooting with the Zeiss 35 millimeter F1.4. But I have to admit when I'm out shooting like in the airport doing vlog shots or just getting some B-roll having fun, it's so nice to have such a light setup with getting such a great quality picture. But I do love that full frame look because you're going to get a blurrier background, you're going to get more dynamic range, and it's going to be better in low light. So if you're a professional or you want to jump into the professional space, then I would say if you have the budget for it, then go with the A7C2. But if you're just starting out and you want to get a feel for how these cameras operate, and you can even shoot professional work, I would have no problem shooting a pro client shoot with the A6700. No problem at all. I'd even right now use it as my B cam, then go with the A6700. So please let me know in the comment section which one of these two cameras you like better and why, and also what videos you would like for me to create with both of these cameras. Once I get my hands on the A7C2 again, I want to do some more comparisons and I need to get some ideas. So please let me know. I'm Joe with the Film Alliance and until the next one, have a nice day. Oh yeah, a big shout out and thank you to Sony for sending me out to Sony Condu. It was an absolute blast. It's a place where you can go and meet other creators and video content creators and things like that where you actually get a more personal relationship rather than just, you know, through the digital world like we normally do through comment sections and things like that. So I was able to meet all the guys that I normally interact with online and uh, it was just a lot of fun. So thank you to Sony. All right. Have a nice week. Nice sun flare right here.